There's some remarkable new reporting in the New York Times to tell you about. It reads like fiction. It reveals what appears to be a dramatic escalation in the lengths and the elaborate uh, plans that the far right activists are willing to go to to subvert their political competition. Through dozens of interviews and the collection of federal election records, journalists at the Times tracked what appear to be conservative operatives, spies really, who over the course of several years infiltrate and embed themselves into progressive groups in multiple states. From that report, quote, the endeavor in the West appears to have had two primary goals, penetrate local and eventually national democratic political circles for long-term intelligence gathering and collect dirt on moderate Republicans that could be used against them in the party battles being waged by Mr. Trump and his allies. What the effort accomplished and how much information the operatives gathered is unclear. Sometimes their tactics were bumbling and amateurish, but the operation's use of spycraft to manipulate the politics of several states over years greatly exceeds the tactics of more traditional political dirty tricks operations. Joining us now, Mark Mazzetti, New York Times Washington investigative correspondent. His byline is on this new report. So Mark Mazzetti, I had a million questions and I worked on Republican campaigns. I won't say dirty campaigns, but there's like a norm of what campaigns do. Um, were these people run by campaign operatives and paid by them? Uh, no. So about a month or so ago, we did a, a report about an effort to uh, sabotage and discredit uh, the National Security Advisor, H.R. McMaster, back in 2018. Um, that operation was uh, run by a man named Richard Seddon, who's a former uh, uh, British spy. Um, this uh, uh, operation we just reported on uh, started about six months later by the same person, Richard Seddon, who was paid by at least one uh, wealthy Republican out West, a woman named Susan Gore, actually the heiress to the Gore-Tex fortune. And um, it was an effort uh, privately funded to um, gather intelligence about Democrats, infiltrate the party circles uh, over time, and also to try to take out moderate Republicans, starting in Wyoming. Uh, expanding in Colorado, Arizona, eventually, as you just read, um, to go after Republicans who were seen not sufficiently with President Trump's agenda. So this was not done by any particular political campaign. It was done privately, but with the aim of having a real um, impact on national politics. Now, were they run by like a headquarters or were they given a lot of latitude to freelance and pick their own candidates to hurt? So our understanding is that they were primarily run by Richard Seddon, um, who uh, had a number of uh, these undercover operatives, two of which we primarily focused on in our story, a couple uh, who uh, worked sort of different sides of the street uh, in terms of infiltrating progressive groups, uh, Democratic uh, local state officials, and also on the Republican side. So how much uh, guidance they took from their donors uh, is unclear. I think Seddon uh, does appear to have primarily uh, run the operation. And, um, and he and the undercovers appeared to have a, a, a fair amount of latitude to, to do these operations. I, I want to end with um, their happily ever after because it's something. But, but I want to ask you about the law. Did they run a, I mean, are there any laws to prevent people from giving fraudulent or, or unintended financial donations with the purpose of infiltrating and spying on campaigns? Is that, is that, does that violate any campaign laws? So what we report is that they gave numerous federal campaign donations as part of this operation. They gave $20,000 to the Democratic National Committee that got them an uh, invite to the Democratic debate last February in Las Vegas. They gave to individual candidates. They gave to Senator Mark Kelly uh, in, uh, in Arizona. Um, now, the law is that you cannot use a do a what's called a straw donation. The, don the money has to be yours. You can't be a pass through. Um, you can't give a donation for somebody else. So it's a still unclear whether there were any laws broken. I mean, they gave the money in their name. The question was, um, whose money was it if it was really theirs um, or if it was someone else's? If it was someone else's, then there are potentially um, legal issues here and potential investigations of illegality. 
So talk to me a little bit about how they live. They lived, it sounds like, undercover as progressives, as Democrats, when they were really not just Republicans, but so fringy that they were living undercover as Democrats, spying on Democrats and reporting back to sort of fringy conservatives. And then they get married and they're toasted by who? Uh, by Glenn Beck, the conservative commentator. And um, the reason for that is that he is the uncle of, of one of the operatives report on a guy named Bo Mayer, uh, who ends up, as you said, marrying uh, his girlfriend, who was the other operative, Sophia LaRocca. Um, the, um, uh, the, the backstory of this couple is that they used to be part of the group Project Veritas. And that's where they actually met uh, when they were working undercover, doing sting operations around Washington, going after the FBI and others. Um, they are then recruited to for this uh, Western states operation by Richard Seddon. Um, they actually are indeed a couple. Um, and then uh, just a week and a half ago, they were married uh, and toasted by Glenn Beck. 